Hi everybody, welcome to Mike's Garage. Uh, listen, it's been a few days ago they had the uh, Daytona 500. Okay, and um, there's a lot of chatter online about uh, what a, uh, a waste that is of fuel and its pollution and you know these guys are going around in a circle going nowhere fast and, and a lot of these snarky comments okay and hey a lot of that's true it is a very high polluting event you know they're burning a lot of fuel and burning a lot of tires and stuff like that and uh, a lot of people are risking their lives out there to uh, to do this but I, I think people forget about all the good things that have come out of that for for all of us uh, just the, the way the tires are developed and the way they make the tires now compared to years ago. Well, well you know, I, I'm in my 70s, so the, the way tires were back then, they didn't have radial tires. They just had regular belted tires, and uh, a lot of them were terrible. A lot of them would have flat spots. You get in the morning on a cold morning and you get in the car to go somewhere, the car sat in the driveway overnight, the tires would actually be flat, the rubber until you got going for a while and the tires heated up, you'd be going like Fred Flintstone down the street with the tires banging and everything until the flat spots got warmed up and the tire got round again. That's how terrible the tires were back in the 50s. Okay, so just the development of tires that can handle the stress, can handle the high speed. Um, you know, they have tires now that won't blow out. They just lose air. They lose their inflation a little bit. You can still drive on them. All those things came out of these kind of races um, where they have to, they try and improve it to make it better. To end the suspension, the shock absorbers, the sway bars, all those things that they put on the race cars to make the race car better has found its way into the, the family sedan. It really has. Uh, it's just, just the way the engine efficiency is. Okay, they use a lot of gas, they have gas guzzling engines, but the engines today have benefited from the wear and tear that takes place in a high speed race like that. The engines are more durable. I mean, who ever heard of getting 100,000 miles out of an engine? Okay, when I had cars in the 50s and 60s, you were lucky to get 60,000 miles out of an engine. It, it would just break. The, the things would be too much friction, there'd be too much wear and tear, and before you knew it, the engine was no good anymore. So you had to either get it repaired, redo the valves, redo the lifters, uh, do something with the engine. Um, the, the original engines didn't even have an oil filter. An oil filter was an add-on in the 50s. Uh, it looked like a little tiny water tower that you added next to the uh, valve cover. It wasn't even a standard item. But they came out with that to filter the oil so you get more mileage out of the oil. And all of those things came out of racing, okay? Um, so it's beneficial to all of us. I agree, the, uh, the race does use a lot of fuel. It's kind of polluting, but the side effects and the benefits, the seat belts, the safety features, the airbags, all came out of trying to make it safer for those drivers at high speed, okay? Okay, the anti-lock brake system uh, keeps you from doing stupid stuff like that. And um, it's just all kinds of good things have come out of races like the Daytona 500, just like drag racing. Uh, how can we make it go faster? How can we make it go better? The guys that put the time and effort in trying to improve it. Uh, I'll tell you something else that we used to do. Now, I used to race C-modified production back in the day. 55 Chevy, 327, four-speed. Uh, it was a hard time. So... Um, one of the problems we were having is either street racing or at the track, the radiator just had a pressure cap on it. You had like an 18 pound pressure cap, to keep the antifreeze in the radiator. Well, when you raise the race or two, it would start to overheat. Now, when it overheated, when it heated up, it expanded. Now, all you had is you had an overflow tube on the side of the neck of the radiator and it ran down the side of the radiator and onto the ground. So you would lose antifreeze every race. You had to wait for it to cool down. You used to have that a quart of fluid, water mixed with antifreeze, alcohol, whatever it was, okay? So 
what was happening is the antifreeze was kind of slippery and what it would do is it would drip on the road and when you went to take off you had to go your back tires had to go through the antifreeze and you would lose traction the tire would break loose you had to let off and then put your foot back into it again to to regain the traction of the wheel so what we started to do i think it was a bleach bottle it was plastic back then we used to get an old bleach bottle and we cut the tube that went off the side of the radiator and we used to wire the bleach bottle next to the radiator and put the tube into the bleach bottle. So when you raced and the antifreeze expanded and it blew out of the 18 pound high pressure cap that you had on the radiator, the fluid wouldn't go on the ground, it would go out and into the bleach bottle. Now, what we found out is if you did that, and it cooled down, it would suck the antifreeze back into the radiator and you weren't refilling it all the time. So instead of it spitting it out and then sucking air back in when it, when it cooled down, it would suck the antifreeze back in and you didn't lose any antifreeze. So now that is standard on all cars today. You have a reservoir and when the engine overheats, it fills up the reservoir a little bit more, and when, the, and when the engine cools down, it sucks the antifreeze back into the engine. And that was just us street racing, okay? Somebody had the bright idea to patent that and uh, go sell it to the automobile industry, that's, that's fine. But that's one of the things that we started doing. Now, I'll admit, I didn't think of it. One of the other guys says, hey, here's what you should do. This other guy's doing it, and it seems to work. And it does work. And that's where that came from, in, in my opinion, okay? That's where that came from, is a, a couple shade tree mechanics came up with that idea at the drag race uh, to keep the antifreeze from dripping on the ground and making the asphalt slippery so you could keep your traction. So, hey, I'm sorry for going on and on, but, you know, when you say bad things about the Daytona 500, yeah, some of it's true, okay? It's just a bunch of guys going around in a circle, but the engineers that are working on the car, the drivers that are saying, hey, if you could just improve this a little bit, it would drive better, have made the cars safer, they last longer. I know my, th my last three cars went well over 140,000 miles. 10 years, 140,000 miles, got your money's worth out of the car, okay? Well, listen, sorry for going on and on. <laughs> hey, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. If you got a comment about a car or something that you guys did, uh, back in the day uh, to get your car to perform better uh, without anybody telling you or maybe it was just a rumor around the neighborhood and you had to give it a try give me a comment I'd like to address it okay um, hit that subscribe button hit the bell we'll put up another video pretty soon thanks for watching Mike's Garage stay safe out there